you know that a dragon fruit just like this one can live for up to 20 years and can push out 50 to 100 fruit per season? That's a lot of fruit and they are so expensive if you have to buy them in the supermarket. And they're so easy to grow if you live in a warm climate like mine in California, zone 9 to 12. So why not grow them yourself? But there is one catch. And this can actually kill off the plant. It is extremely important that you get the soil composition right. And if you're growing in a container, just like I am, because I can't grow cactus in my native clay soil, you have to make sure that this soil will last for at least 10 years, if not 20. So I have spent countless hours on the internet researching, and I believe that I found the very best soil recipe to grow dragon fruit, because you've got only one shot at getting the soil right for this monster, because there is no repotting the beast, which is full of thorns. You might as well start over. We'll start off by reviewing how a dragon fruit grows natively because it's really important to mimic those conditions. We'll then get into the four main ingredients that are necessary for your soil recipe, and I'll talk about a few optional ones as well. We'll then get into planter setup because there is a trick to that too. And then finally, I'm gonna share with you the resources that I use to get the information to develop the soil recipe because you gotta learn from the masters. So I'll let you go straight there and do the rest of your binging on how to grow dragon fruit from the experts. And by the way, during the course of my research, I came across some really interesting information about the much maligned peat moss and learned something about the properties of this thing that really opened my eyes to why it is so important in a container mix. So we'll get into that as well in the video just a little bit, but I'd love some healthy debate in the comments about it as well. Now, dragon fruit is a viney cactus that is believed to be native to Mexico and to Central and South America. But now it is cultivated extensively in Southeast Asia, particularly Vietnam, which is the number one producer of dragon fruit in the world. So even though we associate cactus with more desert-like conditions, dragon fruit is surprisingly a tropical or semi-tropical plant. So how do I, living in a Mediterranean climate with long, hot, dry summers with practically no rain at all, and mild winters, and really heavy clay soil, how do I make those conditions so I can grow dragon fruit? So for starters, I need to get the soil right, and I need to be able to provide sufficient moisture without water logging those roots, because I don't want my plant to get fruit rot. Growing in my hard clay soil is pretty much out of the question unless I amend it heavily, which I really don't want to do. And that's why I'm going to grow in containers. Dragon fruit also does not like freezing temperatures, and I do get a few frost days in winter. Now, there are some varieties that are more tolerant than others, but in general, I need to have the ability to move my dragon fruit plant in the winter to my greenhouse or maybe into my garage. So here we have a 20 gallon pot on wheels, a trellis to train the beast, and now let's talk about the soil characteristics. So like we discussed, this potting soil needs to last and not degrade for at least 10 years. So I won't be adding anything that's too highly organic, like compost. Believe it or not, no compost in this potting mix. It's a cactus, so it needs really well-draining soil. I grew this from seed. Look how cute that is took a whole year to get to this point. But it's also a semi-tropical, tropical plant, and so it needs lots of moisture. So the soil mix needs to be able to absorb a lot of moisture, but also have lots of pores and nooks and crannies so that the roots can breathe. Which reminds me, the soil cannot get compacted over time. Nothing in the soil mix should allow it to compact over time. And over time means over at least 10 years. So that's a long time to expect the soil not to compact but we can do it. And finally, the right pH is also kind of important. Dragon fruit does like the soil to be slightly acidic. So what should we be adding to our soil mix that will satisfy all of the above criteria? But before we get into that, your support means the world to me, and you can show your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Thanks. So one thing I did want to mention is dragon fruit is actually tolerant of a wide range of soil types as long as they are well draining. In fact, when I planted this dragon fruit about two years ago, I didn't know much about the soil. I just added some good well draining potting soil and it's been doing okay so far. However, 
it's only year three for this dragon fruit. It's after year three that I can expect to see problems start to happen. The soil's gonna get more compacted and eventually root rot might kick in. So I'm gonna have to do something about this. I don't quite know yet what I'm gonna do. I repotted this thing about a year ago and even then it was extremely traumatic and I got totally scratched up. So I really don't think I'm gonna be able to move this to a different pot. I'm probably just gonna have to start over. Fortunately, dragon fruit is easy to propagate and grows really really fast. I started this thing from a little plant just about that tall a little over two years ago and now look at it. Yeah. So the first ingredient is peat moss. Now peat moss makes up about 30% of the soil mix and peat is formed by the slow decomposition of plant material in this particular case, sphagnum moss, which are found in wetlands. And the sphagnum moss and other plant materials sink to the bottom of the bog where they decompose very, very slowly under anaerobic conditions. It's got great water retention capabilities, holds on to nutrients, but it's also got wonderful drainage. It's also very lightweight, which is a huge plus, especially when you're growing in containers. We in the U.S. import most of our peat moss from Canada. And while there are environmental concerns about peat moss in places like Europe, in Canada they've got some very strict regulations in place to make sure that they are replenishing the peat moss faster than we are using it. And frankly, for horticultural use, which is like you and I, home gardeners, it is a very, very teeny tiny fraction of what peat moss is used for. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's a really great thing to add very selectively. And for dragon fruit potting soil, there is no substitute. Things like cocoa core are okay. They also decompose fairly slowly. However, cocoa core holds on to moisture a lot more than peat moss does and that won't work in the long term for something like dragon fruit. So, yep, I don't think that there is a substitute, but I would love some healthy debate as well as any other suggestions and recommendations that you may have. I've done my research and I'm comfortable using this selectively in my permanent soil mixes, the soil mixes that are for plants that are going to live for many, many years, like many of my fruit trees. The next ingredient might be a new one to some of you, and that is pumice. Now, pumice is a volcanic rock product, and it is characterized by being extremely lightweight and porous, and it holds on to nutrients quite well, and really helps with the drainage of the soil. Now, I got this in my local animal feed store. It is used as a deodorizer in horse stalls, and this particular one is called dry stall. So if you're in the US and you're looking for this product, it's called dry stall, not to be mistaken with something called stall dry, which sounds very similar to this, but it's a completely different product. It's made from diatomaceous earth and other things and also used for the same purpose, which is deodorizing horse stables. So don't make a mistake, you're looking for pumice. And this is gonna make up another 30% of the soil mix. Our next ingredient is perlite. This is gonna comprise about 20% of the mix and also a volcanic rock product, make sure you wear a mask when you handle this product it kicks up a lot of dust which is not good if it gets in your lungs but i've got the small grade perlite you really want to get the chunky coarse variety but this is what i have and so this is what i'm going to use but if you're going to buy perlite buy the biggest particle size that you can find and i think it's called chunky coarse perlite something like that on amazon if that's where you're going to be shopping for it now, perlite, in addition to being very porous, is also extremely lightweight. You'll see that there's a theme going on here. I'm looking for ingredients that are lightweight, and the reason is the next ingredient. Let me show you. So the next ingredient is sand. Yep, really heavy, but fantastically well-draining, and it does not degrade over time. And it really is one of the most important ingredients in the potting mix. And it's going to account for about 10%, but even that 10% is going to add a lot of weight to your container. So that's why you see so many lightweight products so far, because this thing, it's going to weigh that container down. And that's another reason why sand is not included in potting soils. It's a wonderful ingredient for potting soils, but because of the weight, it can't be shipped easily. So just keep that in mind when you're making your own homemade potting soil definitely add sand to it. Do you know what the best kind of soil is for most plants to grow? It's sandy loam. So the loam adds some of that organic material, but the sand adds so much minerals and texture that the plants really love to grow in. So yeah, sand is a great addition 
to your potting soil mixes, particularly for trees and other plants that are going to last for years and years and years because it does not degrade. The last ingredient, which is going to be about 5% of the mix, is biochar. Now, biochar does have nutrient holding capabilities. Remember that we do need to make sure that your dragon fruit plant is getting sufficient nutrients in spite of the fact that the soil needs to be well draining and biochar is going to help with that. Now, if you're doing the math so far, that adds up to about 95%. And so you've got 5% flexibility. Do not add compost, but you can add cocoa core. What you need to do is on top of your soil, after you've put it into your planter, you would add things like compost, mulch, etc., chicken manure maybe, and those nutrients will gradually seep into the soil, but they won't stick around the roots because you do not want anything organic around the roots. That's what's gonna cause your root rot. So I've got all my ingredients laid out. The first one here is pumice, just to show you what it looks like from a texture perspective. And it is relatively light, not as light as perlite, but relatively lightweight. This is our peat moss. And this, the one that kicks up the most dust, is the perlite. I've got some regular sand here. Now I've got the more gritty type and Grittier is better when you talk about cactus mixes. And then finally, biochar. This is what biochar looks like. So before the wind blows this all away, I'm gonna mix them all together. I've got these three planters that I need to fill up. These are both 20 gallon containers. And this is my lovely new planter from Vago Garden. It's about 27 gallons capacity. So those are the three that are gonna be filled up with this soil mix. One little tip when you are mixing in perlite that kicks up a lot of dust or anything that blows a lot of dust, wet it down a little bit. I'm only going to be wetting down the perlite, mix it in a little and then wet it down some more. And then the rest of the ingredients I'm going to leave pretty dry and uh, mix them all together. Okay, so I'm done mixing the soil. That's kind of what it looks like. That trampoline netting sure came in handy. But other than that, for you parents out there, don't ever, ever, please, please get a trampoline for your kids. It's like the worst thing. My kids loved the trampoline, but there have been broken bones and I myself have gotten badly injured. It's just so not worth it. So don't get a trampoline, but I sure was able to put it to good use mixing that soil. Now let me show you how we set up the planter. So the very first layer we're gonna be getting into this container is a layer of paper towels because we're going to be putting a layer of perlite at the bottom and you don't want the perlite to flow through these really large holes at the bottom of it. So this should disintegrate very easily. You can use newspaper, butcher paper, anything that will decompose pretty rapidly. And before I put the perlite in, I've got to put the trellis in. Now, as we fill up the soil, the trellis is going to stabilize. So let's get just a couple of gallons of perlite to coat the bottom. So now let's go ahead and fill up the rest of this with the soil. Any kind of amendments that you want to put, like compost or chicken manure, will go on the top, never mixed into the soil. And so this soil mix will not degrade for years and years and years and the amendments that you put on the top will gently seep into the soil. That way, we'll never have root rot issues now, will we? And all I need to do now is plant up this dragon fruit and tie it around the post and then just watch it grow. That looks pretty good, not too root bound or anything. I can plant up to four plants in this. I might plant two of the same variety. Now let's tie it up to the trellis. I like using this green tape, nice and flexible. And 
And as my mom, rest in peace mom, always used to say, whenever you plant something for the first time, always give it some uirutani, which is water of life. I've got to get this up on its wheels, so I'm going to go ahead and do that before this plant gets too big, because I want to be able to move it around. As promised, I'm going to put a link to two channels that I think you absolutely should follow and subscribe and binge on. One is What Plant Is This Paul, where Paul is all about dragon fruit and he's got incredible experience on his dragon fruit farm. And he's the one that I learned how to make this mix from. But then he pointed me through the video to his source, which is Gary from Laguna Hills Nursery. So I'll put a link to both those channels and you can learn everything you ever wanted to know about dragon fruit and about how to make great potting soil from Gary who's an absolute boss. Oh and by the way I will put a link to my YouTube playlist where I talk all about the dragon fruit journey that I've been on. I've got time lapses of beautiful flowers opening and I've got a lot of educational stuff that I hope you will find useful. So check out that playlist as well. Until next time, live green and love your greens.